Hello guys and welcome back to another tips and tricks video and today this video is going to be all about circles and curves because let's face it they're now much easier to do and make your factory stand out. Straight off the bat though you can use the satisfactory calculator or mods to create circles we'll be covering how to do this easily in vanilla. So building a circle. To build a circle, we need to place foundations at an angle next to one another so that there are no obtruding walls from the side. When building a circle, I highly recommend building with a diameter of 11 foundations wide or 21 foundations wide. And this is because it will give you the cleanest look to your circle build. Now the center point is where we will work from for our circles. First, place a foundation on top of this foundation and then zoop five foundations wide in a cross. This is so that we can do a slightly smaller circle. Once this is done, delete the centerpiece. Next, we will place another foundation where that centerpiece was. However, this time we will hold down control as we rotate the foundation to create a two increment rotation on that foundation piece. We will then repeat the cross, zooping five across in each direction. Now the edge of the circle should be almost perfectly smooth. Continue the placing and repeating until this circle is complete. It takes a bit of time, but once then you'll notice that you have this um, circle. You'll also notice that there is a flicker on the flooring because of the clipping floors. Now to minimize the flicker, you can try using different colors or materials. My favorite is concrete. However, if this really does annoy you, you still can delete all of the center foundations and replace this with the foundation that snaps to your world grid. Here, I've partnered the outer concrete foundations with the metal grip flooring, which looks pretty good to me. And alternatively, we can actually start the circle below the level of our factory. And then all we need to do once it's built is clip the factory grid along the top of the foundations so that you will only have the walls that you've placed around your circle coming through and that will give you the uh, original factory grid, grid to work from. Now if you do want to do this for a larger circle of 21 foundations wide that means zooping 10 foundations either side of the centerpiece. You will need to rotate the center foundation instead of two increments by only one single increment. If you then run to the edge of the 10 foundations you should notice that there is hardly an obtrusion of the neighboring foundations. If this is the case, continue until the circle is complete. Just continue the steps that we did in the previous smaller circle. Now that you understand the concept of creating a circle, we can actually move on to my new favorite build, which is these perfect curved foundations, which are done in vanilla. This is great for the use of vehicles, but I've built mine specifically for railways and takes the radiuses that we've used previously for the circles. So once you come to a point on your rail, which you'd like to be a curve, run a horizontal line of foundations. Now, if you want to go right, you'll take the foundations to the right of the build. If you want the curve to go left, you'll take the foundations to the left of the build. So at this point, we're going to run another five foundations along the left of this particular railway line. And once placed, we will run to the furthest foundation and underneath it, we will place another foundation to work from. We will then delete all of the foundations on top between the curve and the last foundation, which is the center of the circle. Now at this point, you'll want to place a new foundation above it and hold control like we did with the circle build to rotate the foundation by two increments. Now at this point, zoop five foundations back towards the rail line and you should be able to see that the foundation you've just placed is slightly rotated 
but the sides are flush against its neighbor. Of course, if you do want to make this a larger corner, you can do this by going 10 foundations wide, and instead of using the two increments on the rotation, use a single increment. Now, as with the circle, we just need to rinse and repeat this method, deleting all the foundations in between, and eventually you will have a beautiful curve to the point that you want it to go to. Now, if you want the curve to line up with your factory grid, you'll want to start by lining up the two last foundations as close as possible. This is the one in the curve and also the one that it's going to join with on the, the factory's grid. Now, at this point, you should have a relatively small gap between the two end rails or foundations. Here, we will place a beam horizontally to create a snapping point for a new foundation. This will allow us to edge in one meter increments towards the other foundation. Once placed, we'll place a foundation on top. And if it looks like the edges end within within the next foundation more or less, we will then place a foundation beneath it. Now they may not be perfectly aligned. This is a slight issue, but to close this off, you can actually line the height up using the foundation frames. But because these are 40 centimeter increments, they won't be perfect. But once done, you should be able to see the foundations almost at the same height. You may want to use foundation one meter ramps to just even out this little height difference. Now, if out of the sides of the foundations, they are obtruding a little too much for you, consider adding beams or walls along the outside of the foundation. This will give it a more supported look and it'll also hide those poking out foundations. Now this can take a bit of patience to do, but once accomplished, it can create some pretty smooth transitions along your rails. As in my application, this is a rail network, I've placed the rail at the start of the curve and tried to line the rail up with the edge of the, the curve as it goes around. Now to make your life much easier, one thing that I would recommend is always placing your bracing tracks first. These are the straight ones that lead in and out of the curve. But once done, you should have a beautiful train curve. Now to go on one further, though I will no doubt cover this later in a, another video, you can relatively easily add some basic supports which look great. Here I've partnered the small pillar support with the small concrete pillars and the big frame pillars. Now to do this, you need to place the big frame pillars down first, followed by deleting the top big frame pillar to place the small pillar support and then after that zooping down the small concrete pillars and placing the big frame at the top again. If you don't do it in this order, you may find that it won't work. So do bear that in mind if you're having problems. Now this partnered with the painted beams, in my opinion, makes for an awesome looking rail line and one that won't require you to flip back any diagonal foundations that seem to have gone rogue. So I think from now on, this may be the same style that we will be using throughout all of our streams. Speaking of which, if you do want to join us in a stream, make sure to check out our Twitch channel. The link is in the description below. Anyway, guys, that is all we have time for. If you found it helpful, please do drop a thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to our amazing supporters who allow me to make this content, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, the Calamity Cerebral Tag and James Irwin, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Dixie Chris and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.